Hi everyone, my name is Yukari and I will be making daily process videos as I participate in World Water Color Month, which is happening right now the entire month of July when artists from all over the globe share their watercolor pieces um, on social media and encourage and support each other through the process. And for me, uh, I use this month to experiment um, with my favorite medium, which is watercolors, and try new techniques or new supplies. And this year, what I wanted to do was to share my experience. Um, I have, um, I, I, most watercolor artists use watercolor paper, of course. Um, I use Tomoya River paper which is paper made mainly for fountain pen users because inks and paints kind of sit on top of the paper and it doesn't bleed through. It's a very thin piece of paper, but it's very um, resilient in terms of holding on to the ink. And so I love using it for journaling and um, and I've been using it to sketch and journal for about 10 years. And so the process of painting on Tomoe River paper is a little different than painting on traditional watercolor paper. So I wanted to share my, um, my experience, some tips and tricks, I suppose, uh, with you guys as I go through the, the daily prompts. So let's take a look at what World Watercolor Month prompts look like. So here are the prompts um, for World Watercolor Month. And you can, for, you can go to worldwatercolormonth.com to, to read about its history um, and how Charlie O'Shields got started doing this. It's, it's really a, quite an interesting story. So I really encourage you guys to take a look at that. Uh, so for today, the prompt is reflection. And so um, I wanted to, to really focus on food and floral. So I chose water lilies to illustrate um, because you, you've seen pictures of water lily sitting on water with its reflection um, on the water. And it's always quite beautiful and serene. And so I wanted to illustrate that. Um, and if you want to participate in World Watercolor Month in whatever social media that you participate in, whether it's um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, there is a uh, dedicated Facebook group for World Watercolor Group. So you can join it and share your pieces there, um, even on Snapchat, whatever it is. But you should use the hashtag World Watercolor Month when you do so others can see your work. So here are the, the main supplies that I will be using all summer. Here is my notebook. This is the Tomoya River notebook that I was talking about. This one is the Hobonichi Techo in the cousin size, which is A5, and in the AVEC version, which comes as two books rather than one for the entire year. Uh, I'm a teacher and I, my academic year starts in July, so it's always nice to have um, a notebook that starts in July. And um, so I, I, I buy the AVEC, AVEC version. Uh, when I first had the Hobonichi, I did use it as a planner. Um, and, and that's what most people do. But about three years ago, I started using it for sketching and memory keeping. And I, I really enjoy it for, for that. So this is my Tomoya River notebook. And here are my watercolors. And this is Daniel Smith brand of watercolors that I've, um, you know, by the tubes and poured it into a palette. 
and these are all the colors that I actually own. Um, I do make a color chart um, that lists not only the color, but also the pigment number. Um, I like that because depending on the brand that you use, uh, certain brands will name a color one thing, um, a, another brand may name it differently, but they use the same pigment. And it can be confusing if you're trying to create mixes um, that other artists use. So I started just keeping tabs of my uh, pigment number information here. Um, and uh, I, I do have other brands of watercolors. Um, but I am not home at the moment. Um, I live in Arizona, but I'm spending the entire month of July in Massachusetts. And I only brought um, my basic supplies. And so I only brought my Daniel Smith, um, but I do have other brands. Uh, anyway, so um, I do like to sketch both in pencil and pen. And this is the Jetstream multi-pen that houses my pencil and, um, and three pens, three different uh, pen colors, black, red, and um, blue. And I think there's also a, a green. Anyway, um, it's all 0.5 millimeter size. And if I need details, I use the Jetstream 0.38 in black. Um, I know a lot of artists like to use the felt tip like the Microns, and I love them too, but on Tamoya River paper, the ink dries so much slower that I've smeared quite a few sketches. And so I started using ballpoint pen um, for my sketches and Jetstream really is the best. I also use a mono uh, eraser and I'm quite picky about the kind of eraser that I use and mono really is, I, I think it's the best. Um, and this is a Signo, uh, Uni Signo uh, white gel pen, which I use for outlining sometimes and for highlights. I love it. It's very opaque. Uh, and these are the three brushes that I mainly use. And really, I, I use the silver size 10 probably mo, uh, most often. But I will be using these two Rosemary & Co. brushes that I actually won um, in a giveaway by Anna Mason. She's an amazing artist who does realistic um, florals and fruits. She's a fantastic artist. Uh, and if you've ever seen her, you should, or if you haven't, you should check her out on Instagram. So these are my basic supplies that I will be using um, this entire month. So here is what a typical page might look like. On the Hobonichi Techo, there are daily pages, and you will see uh, the, the date here and the day of the week, which is written in Japanese. Um, and there are, is always a quote of some kind also written in Japanese. And I usually either uh, paint over or put washi or something like that. Um, but anyway, so this is what uh, my typical uh, page would look like. And it's going to have, I try to include daily affirmation. Um, I have an app that I can look up every day um, to write here. And um, also daily gratitudes. I try to list out these three things that I am grateful for each day. And I usually do this first thing in the morning before I do any sketching, um, usually. Um, it's just a, a good way to, to start your day. Um, but for here, 
I'm going to be including my color palette that I've used in my sketch. So I've used this pinky Quinn Lilac, um, sap green, and neutral tint is, is what I like to use mainly for mixing darks. Um, and I used it uh, for my, my shadow, and then I added ultramarine blue to create the water. And then for the flower shadows, I use ultramarine blue mixed a little bit with Quinn Lilac, which makes a, a purpley color, which is always a great um, gray, I suppose, or, or, or shadow to use. Uh, I don't know if you can see here that I did do a pencil sketch. I created kind of a, a, a rough circle and I started in the middle creating these petals first. And, um, and I sketch these petals using um, a pencil. And once I was happy with the composition, I tried to erase a lot of the pencil mark, but not completely. And um, because these are delicate petals, I decided that I would trace the petals using my white gel pen. And, and that's what I did. And uh, I, I painted the, the inner petals first. And, um, and I used Quinn Lilac just to outline the petal. And then using a wet brush, I just drag the color down to soften the, the edges. Um, and then very light pink color on the rest of these petals and then I've added shadows um, with this mix right here. And um, so the water is is the mix of neutral tint and ultramarine blue and, um, and, and this is just straight neutral tint. It didn't take very long to do the sketch and, and paint but you do sometimes have to wait for things to dry. Um, it's, it's never completely dry on Tomoya River paper. And so you can activate any paint even after it's been sitting for days or years. And you could just take a wet brush and re-wet the, the, the paint. But it will dry enough that you can add layers. And um, that's what I did for for these petals to add a little more depth and for this shadow here i think i i used um just straight ultramarine blue because i wanted that to be a little more um, prominent than the other shadows on the petal um and so i do journal every day and what I share on social media is what I can share. I, I do write other things um, that are a little more personal that I won't be sharing. So you might see things that are blurred or I, I'll just share the art on social media. But I do enjoy the process of, of, of writing. And reflection is such a great prom because not only is it a physical reflection, but it's something that I enjoy doing on a daily basis, thinking about what happened during the day or thinking about something that I saw in the news, whatever it is that I feel like writing about. And um, so, yeah, the art of reflection, I think, is really quite important, especially, you know, as we get over the pandemic and, um, you know, a lot of us are, are struggling with mental health issues, it's it's just a great way to to write things. Um, I've also I've done journaling where I've done I've written really nasty things and um, I feel better after I said them or wrote them down and then I painted over it so it's it's gone. Um, you know, there are just so many things that you can do with a journal that makes you feel better about about life in general. So anyway, um, hopefully tomorrow I will be sharing with you guys actual process of me painting. So if you would like to follow me um, on other platforms, I am on Instagram and here is the link to that. 
And I also do have a blog um, that hasn't been active for a while, but um, I do still keep it. Um, so please follow along. And if you like this video, um, click like and please sus sus subscribe to my channel. All right, everyone, thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.